Aloha, welcome to the Mr. G Podcast. It is Monday, January 15th, 7.59 a.m. It's a cool, chilly 61 degrees here in Honolulu. It rarely gets into the 50s. In 11 years I've lived here, it's dropped in the 50s maybe one or two times, maybe a few times. Um, But we're close, 61 degrees. And today is Martin Luther King Day, 2024. Happy MLK Day. Uh, Martin Luther King Day is a holiday that reminds me of an underdog in the NCAA tournament. When I was growing up in the 80s and 90s, MLK Day wasn't that big of a deal. It's like, oh, we get a day off from school. We get a day off from work. But in the last couple of decades, it's really pushed its way uh, to the forefront of national holidays. And that goes to show the legacy of Martin Luther King. Uh, a great teacher, a great Christian, and who will be remembered for generations, for hundreds or thousands of years, um, as a great Christian teacher as well. Um, His teachings uh, have become more um, uh, prevalent in the last uh, few years, uh, since there's so much division in the United States, and it seems like the powers that be um, are trying to create division and uh, trying to create strife among people, among petty issues, um, where Dr. Dr. Martin Luther King uh, really taught unity and people coming together and judging individuals uh, by their character and not by the color of their skin. And that's a lesson and uh, that's going to live on just like Martin Luther King will as well. And today we're gonna read uh, his famous speech, I Have a Dream, and we'll also learn a little bit more about the doctor, Martin Luther King. So Martin Luther King Jr. was born in 1929, January 15th. What a coincidence. (laughs) Happy birthday, MLK. He was an American minister, activist, and political philosopher who was one of the most prominent leaders of the civil rights movements from 1955 until his assassination in 1968. A black church leader and a son of an early civil rights activist and minister, Martin Luther King Sr., King advanced civil rights for people of color in the United States through the use of nonviolent resistance and nonviolent civil disobedience. These were against Jim Crow laws and other discrimination in the United States. King participated in and led marches for the right to vote, desegregation, labor rights, and other civil rights. He oversaw the 1955 Montgomery bus boycott and later became the president of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. As president of the SCLC, he led the unsuccessful Albany movement in Albany, Georgia and helped organize some of the nonviolent 1963 protests in Birmingham, Alabama. King was one of the leaders of the 1963 March on Washington where he delivered his I Have a Dream speech on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. He also helped organize two of the three Selma Montgomery marches during the 1965 Selma voting rights movement. The civil rights movement achieved pivotal legislative gains in the Civil Rights Act of 1964, Voters' Rights Act of 1965, and the Fair Housing Act of 1968. So his I Have a Dream speech. On August 28, 1963, some hundred years after President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation freeing the slaves. A young man named Martin Luther King climbed the marble steps of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. to describe his vision of America. More than 200,000 people, black and white, came to listen. They came by plane, by car, by bus, by train, and by foot. They came to Washington to demand equal rights for black people, and the dream that they heard on the steps of the monument became the dream of a generation. As far as Black Americans were concerned, the nation's response to Brown was agonizing slow, and neither state legislations nor the Congress seemed willing to help their cause along. Finally, President John F. Kennedy recognized that only a strong civil rights bill would put teeth into the drive to secure equal protection of the laws for African Americans. On June 11, 1963, he proposed such a bill to Congress, asking for legislation that would provide the kind of equality of treatment which we want for ourselves. Southern representatives in Congress managed to block the bill in committee, and civil rights leaders sought some way to build political momentum behind the measure. 
A. Philip Randolph, a labor leader and longtime civil rights activist, called for a massive march on Washington to dramatize the issue. He welcomed the participation of white groups as well as black in order to demonstrate the multiracial backing for civil rights. The various elements of the civil rights movement, many of which have been weary of one another, agreed to participate. The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, the Congress of Racial Equality, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, and the Urban League all managed to bury their differences and work together. The leaders even agreed to tone down the rhetoric of some of the more militant activists for the sake of unity, and they worked closely with the Kennedy administration, which hoped the march would, in fact, lead to the passage of a civil rights bill. On August 28, 1963, under a nearly cloudless sky, more than 250,000 people, a fifth of them white, gathered near the Lincoln Memorial in Washington to rally for jobs and freedom. The roster of speakers included speakers from nearly every segment of society, labor leaders like Walter Ruther, clergy, film stars such as Sidney Poitier and Marlon Brando, and folk singers such as Joan Baez. Each of the speakers was allotted 15 minutes, but the day belonged to the young and charismatic leader of the Southern Christian leadership. So, um, I don't have the entire speech. I'll, I'll read a portion of it. I have a dream that one day out in the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day, even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day in Alabama with its vicious racists, with its governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification, that one day right down in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be engulfed, every hill shall be exalted and every mountain shall be made low. The rough places be, will be made plains and the crooked places will be made straight and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all the flesh shall see it together. This is our hope. This is the faith that I will go back to the South with. With this faith, we will be able to hem out the mountains of despair, of a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation to a beauty symphony of brotherhood. With that faith, with this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to climb up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. This will be the day when all of God's children will be able to sing with new meaning. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. And if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. So let freedom ring from the hilltops of New Hampshire. Let freedom ring from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the heightened allergies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. But not only that, let freedom ring from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Let freedom ring from every hill and molehill of Mississippi and every mountainside. When we let freedom ring, we let it ring from every tenement and every hamlet, from every state and every city. We will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, we will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old spiritual. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Martin Luther King, I have a dream. <clears throat> extremely well written, uh, um, and extremely, uh, you know, I got 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 a little touched up uh, be reading it because uh, it's it's um, a great passage, and uh, 
you know, it's something that uh, he will be known for uh, for generations. Sometimes the work that we do here, um, it's known longer than the person. And, and I have a feeling that's similar to uh, uh, that, 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 that wonderful speech. So um, the, the, the death of Martin Luther King. On March 29th, 1968, King went to Memphis, Tennessee to support the black sanitation workers who um, the workers have been on strike since March 12th for higher wages and better treatment. And in one incident, black street repairmen re received pay for two hours when they were sent home because of bad weather, but white employees were paid for the full day. On April, thing, on April 3rd, King addressed a rally and delivered his I've been to the mountaintop address at Mason Temple. King's flight to Memphis had been delayed by a bomb threat against his plane. In reference to the bomb threat, King said, and then I go to Memphis and some begin to say the threats or talk about the threats that were out. What would happen to me if some of our sick white brothers, well, I don't know what would happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead, but it doesn't matter with me now because I've been to the mountaintop and I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place, but I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go to the mountain. And I've looked over and I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we, as a people, we will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. King was booked into room 306 in the Lorraine Motel in Memphis. Ralph Abernathy, who was president of the assassination, testified to the United States House Select Committee on Assassinations that King and his entourage stayed at room 306 so often that it was known as the King Abernathy Suite. According to Jesse Jackson, who was president, King's last words were spoken to musician Ben Branch, who was scheduled to perform that night at an event King was attending. Ben, make sure you play Take My Hand, Precious Lord, in the meeting tonight. Play it real pretty. King was fatally shot by someone Thursday, April 4th, 1968, as he stood on the motel's second floor balcony. The bullet entered through his right cheek, smashing his straw, then traveling down his spinal cord before lodging in his shoulder. Abernathy heard the shot from inside the motel room and ran to the balcony and found King on the floor. After emergency surgery, King died at St. Joseph Hospital at 7.05. According to biographer Taylor Branch, King's autopsy revealed that though only 39 years old, he had the heart of a 60-year-old, which Branch attributed to stress. King was initially interred in Southview Cemetery in South Atlanta, but in 1977, his remains were transferred to a tomb on the site of Martin Luther King Jr. National Historical Park. Aftermath. The assassination led to race riots in Washington, D.C., Chicago, Baltimore, Louisville, Kansas City, and dozens of other cities. President candidate Robert F. Kennedy was on his way to Indianapolis for a campaign rally when he was informed of King's death. He gave a short, improvised speech to the gatherers of supporters, informing him of the tragedy and urged them to continue King's ideal of nonviolence. The following day, he delivered a prepared response in Cleveland. James Farmer Jr. and other civil rights leaders also called for nonviolent action, while the more militant Stokely Carmichael called for a more forceful response. The city of Memphis quickly settled the strike on terms of favorable to the sanitation workers. The plan to set up a shantytown in Washington, D.C. was carried out soon after the April 4th assassination. Criticism of King's plan was subdued in the wake of his death. The campaign officially began in Memphis on May 2nd at the hotel where King was murdered. Thousands of demonstrators arrived on the National Mall and stayed for six weeks, establishing a camp they called Resurrection City. President Johnson tried to quell the riots by making telephone calls to civil rights leaders, mayors, and governors across the United States. He told politicians that they should warn the police against the unwanted use of force. However, I'm not getting through, Johnson told his aides. They're holding up like generals in a dugout getting ready to watch a war. 
Johnson declared April 7th a national day of mourning for King. Vice President Hubert Humphrey attended King's funeral on behalf of the president as there were fears that Johnson present at his funeral might incite protests and perhaps violence. At his widow's request, King's last sermon at Ebenezer Baptist Church given on February 4th, 1968 was played at the funeral. I'd like somebody to mention that Martin Luther King Jr. tried to give life serving others. I'd like for somebody to say that day that Martin Luther King Jr. tried to love somebody. I want you to say that I tried to be right on the war question. I want you to be able to say that I did try to feed the hungry. I want you to be able to say that I did try my life to close those who were naked. I want you to say on that day that I did try my life to visit those who were in prison. And I want you to say that I tried to love and serve humanity. Yes, if you want to say that I was a drum major, say that I was a drum major for justice. Say that I was a drum major for peace. I was a drum major for righteousness and all the other shallow things will not matter. I won't have any money to leave behind. I won't have the fine and luxurious things of a life to leave behind, but I just want to leave behind a committed life. All right, Martin. MLK Jr., rest in peace. So, <laughs> pretty heavy stuff uh, to start off the day. Uh, another great thing about Martin Luther King Day is there are some awesome uh, NBA basketball games today. And I wish I had money to bet on them, but you know, the uh, game I'm looking forward to is Oklahoma City playing in the Staples Center. Uh, that's the hot seat, playing the Lakers. Uh, OKC is probably going to beat LeBron James and uh, AD. Uh, if any of you are interested, I, I feed almost 100 homeless cats every morning before sunrise. Uh, if you, you guys want to check out my uh, progress, check me out on TikTok and get yourself a Cat Lives Matter t-shirt. Get yourself a brand new one at the Mr. G Hawaii Shopify store. All right. Uh, that was uh, some really interesting stuff. Uh, what we can learn from Martin Luther King is, I think that one of the main things is to judge individuals uh, by their actions and um, uh, by their character and uh, try to uh, be a better and a kinder person. Um, we're all here for a limited time. It's a miracle that we all exist. It's a miracle that we are on a rock flying around a star going a million miles per hour on the corner of the Milky Way galaxy. Uh, there are billions of stars in the Milky Way galaxy. If you could travel at the speed of light, it would take you 100,000 years just to get from one side to the other. There are billions of stars in the Milky Way galaxy and there are trillions of galaxies just in the little spot, the space that we can see. It's a miracle that we're out here on a speck of dust. Uh, so let's all appreciate that and let's try to be nicer to our neighbor and our fellow human uh, in 2024. It's a very crazy time to be alive. Uh, we don't know what's going on. We don't know who to trust. Um, no telling what's going to happen next, but uh, keep that. And, uh, let's remain positive and have faith in the human race as Martin Luther King did. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, Mr. G Podcast, it's available wherever you listen to podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, uh, and episodes are uploaded in their entirety on youtube.com slash Gregory Brandt and twitter.com slash Gregory Brandt. Once again, thank you for listening and have a nice day. Aloha. And as they say, shoots.